Domesticating horses has had a vital impact on humankind's history on Earth by changing the way we perform tasks such as agriculture, warfare, travel, and trade. The earliest evidence of the horse domestication is as early as 3500 BC. Recent studies have shown that the Eurasian grasslands have played a key role in the domestication of horses by reflecting it through the coat colour that first surfaced in Siberian and Eastern European area, showing signs of artificial selections being present. first appeared in the steppes of the Eurasian area. The majority of the surroundings are still covered in dense vegetation and forest, which is mostly avoided by these animals. Any evidence that wild horses inhabited the area in this particular time period is extremely rare and given the circumstances of the undesirable habitat. This proposes that the stock was originally imported to the area and the domesticated European horse descended from these animals. It has recently been discovered in the mitochondrial DNA that the sequence data from both pre-domestic and domestic horses has exposed how the European wild populations were an essential part in the genetic pool of domesticating the modern horse. In some regions where domestic stock was largely introduced, it is believed that the local wild horses played a very minor role in the domestications, where in other areas in Europe are still undistinguished as to how extensive the genetic influence really was. In this experiment, 24 European horse breeds typed to 12 microsatellite Loki were chosen to investigate the patterns in genetic diversity. The spreading in which the high levels of diversity were located corresponds with the open landscapes that were present before the domestication of horses. The results showed that the geographic change involving the genetic variation was largely found in two specific places, these places being the Caspian region in Western Asia and in the Iberian Peninsula. Similarly, the allelic richness was attained within Central and Western Europe, which was depicted through the spans of the open landscapes. In Figure 1, each image shows how the genetic diversity is distributed by darker shades being more significant and lighter shades as less. Each white spot shows the approximate location of the different populations of wild horses. Image A demonstrates the interruption of expected heterozygosity H in old European horse breeds, where image B shows the interruptions of allelic richness RS in the 24 breeds selected, with the smallest sampling size of N equals 17. And image C demonstrates the distribution of environments assumedly based by the evidence 6,000 years ago in the Eurasian area. This investigation revealed that there were two main locations in which the genetic diversity was most concentrated. Although it was not possible to fully concentrate the specific regions of the domestication due to the lack of sampling done, the Caspian region had enough evidence to support the idea of wild horses having inhabited the area once before. The Iberian Peninsula also had an open field similar to those of the Caspian region. This evidence was further supported by the horse remains that were found in the Neolithic and Copper Ages sites. They have also found traces of pre-domestic maternal lineages, which are found in some modern horses. This helps in documenting how significant the genetic contribution to these modern domestic horses really were. Unfortunately, there has been no evidence in supporting the hypothesis of these wild horses inhabiting any other places throughout Europe. While studies do not show the complete absence of these animals from the forested regions, it may have been possible. Further insights will be processed from the given study into the domestication of horses and how these wild horses contributed to their genetic makeup.